In this video we're going to be learning about covalent bonding, we're also going to be looking at some dot and cross diagrams for covalent molecules, and finally we're going to look at some boiling and melting points of simple covalent molecules and how this is explained by this concept of intermolecular forces. So to start off, I want you to complete the electronic structures of these three elements. You can pause the video. So what you should get is two electrons in the first shell for lithium and one electron in the outer shell. For aluminium, you should get two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and three electrons in the final shell. And for potassium, once again, two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, eight in the third shell, and one in the last outer shell. You can see that lithium and potassium both have one electron in the outer shells, so that means they are in group one. Aluminium has three electrons in the outer shell, so it must be in group three. A covalent bond is a type of bond between non-metal atoms. So for example, I've got two individual hydrogen atoms over here, and you will notice that they only have one electron in the outer shell, which means that they have incomplete outer shells. This makes them very, very unstable. So to become stable, they share electrons and form a covalent bond. This is why you often see hydrogen written as H2 in chemical reactions, because this is the most stable form of hydrogen. Let's look at another example, this time involving chlorine. Now, if you want to draw the dot and cross diagram for the bonding in chlorine, you need to ask yourself a couple of questions. So the first question is, which group is chlorine in? And that is group seven. That tells you that it has seven electrons in the outer shell. So if I was to get two individual atoms of chlorine side by side, you would see that there are seven electrons in the outer shell. Now, when you're drawing dot and cross diagrams, you don't need to show the other shells. You just need to show the outer shell as those electrons are involved in bonding. So because both chlorine atoms only need one electron each to complete their shells, they form a covalent bond. So the electrons are shared uh, as shown over here. So this means that chlorine, <coughs> chlorine exists in the diatomic form or the Cl2 form. So now I want you to apply what you have learnt to these questions over here. I want you to draw dot and cross diagrams for the bonding shown in these molecules. Now for example in water, just be mindful of the fact that you have two hydrogen atoms bonded to one oxygen atom and in dot and cross diagrams you only need to show the electrons in the outer shell. If you do draw other electrons in the inner shells, you wouldn't lose any marks in the exam, but it would just be a waste of time. So I'm going to let you pause the video and I'll go through the answers in just a second. The first one is HCl. Now hydrogen has one electron in its outer shell, chlorine has seven. They both need one more electron to become stable, so they share their electrons and form a covalent bond. You also notice that chlorine has six electrons that are not part of the bonding process. So if you pair them up, we can say that chlorine has three lone pairs. The second one is water or H2O. Oxygen is bonded to two hydrogen atoms. Hydrogen only needs one more electron. Oxygen needs two more electrons and they share their electrons in a covalent bond. Oxygen also has two lone pairs. Third example is ammonia or NH3. The central nitrogen atom is bonded to three hydrogen atoms and they share electrons to form a covalent bond. The nitrogen has only one lone pair. The final example is methane or CH4. Uh, the central carbon atom is surrounded by four hydrogen atoms and this also forms a covalent bond. In this last part of the video, we're going to be looking at the melting and boiling points of simple covalent molecules and how this concept of intermolecular forces is involved. Now, simple covalent molecules are molecules with only a few atoms in their structure. So molecules such as oxygen, water and carbon dioxide can be classified as simple covalent molecules. This is because they exist as either a gas or liquid at room temperature and uh, this is because they have weak intermolecular forces. 
To explain this concept of intermolecular forces, suppose you have a jar of hydrogen chloride, so pure hydrogen chloride gas at room temperature. If we take a closer look at the particles, there is an attractive force that is trying to bring these particles closer together. This force is called intermolecular force. It's a very weak force and uh, in the exam you're required to mention that intermolecular forces are weak and easily overcome. Now if you lower the temperature so you get rid of some of the heat energy, the force can suddenly become uh, a bit stronger than, than usual and the particles can come closer together and either become a solid or a liquid. If you raise the temperature again then the force is easily overcome because it's a weak force and the particles can separate and the molecule or the molecule becomes a gas. So this is pretty much the concept of intermolecular force and this is all you're required to explain at GCSE Chemistry.